Hey, what's up guys? It's the Last Party here, and in today's video we're going to be looking at something very, very different. We're going to be looking at some World of Tanks, and be sure to stay in tuned if you are interested. Alright, boys and girls, we are into the replay, and we are playing on the map Highway, which, uh, if some of you World of Tanks players out there know that, I think it was just recently, I guess recently added, uh, into the game, right after patch 1.0, and, well, it's one of, uh, one of my favorite maps, actually. It... Sometimes it can be very, very awful, honestly, but other times it can be very, very fun and enjoyable. So here on the map highway, I'm going to be playing uh, this ridge line here and working this ridge line to my advantage, and we'll have to see how this ends up. So we're playing in the T34-100, but the, uh, Czech Repo or the Czech version of the T34, so I believe it's got a 100 millimeter. Hence the T34 slash 100, but uh, either way, it's a great gun for this tier. Uh, the aiming time is quite poor, though, as you can kind of see. So we'll just kind of have to uh, steady our aim a little bit and wait just a few more seconds. But you can see the there's pretty good accuracy on this gun. We're landing uh, most of our shells at like around 400 meters, which is actually quite good uh, for a tier 7 medium tank against these tier 8, tier 6 mediums as well. So we're going to go with the easier shot here on the Revolorice, and we're going to be pounding him. Now I'm going to try and do a blind shot here. Will I get it? Nope. I don't get it, but I do get a lucky bounce off that Panther M10. I'm going to put a round into him, and wow, someone hit him hard. Uh, most likely the Scorpion G, and then I managed to get my first kill of the game, which was quite fortunate. So before I had any time to explain anything... Um, Basically, uh, this how I've got this tank set up is I've got rammer, coated optics, and then also vents. That's probably the most three common, um, most three common things uh, equipment that you would use on a medium tank, and I guess almost all tanks. That's something that you would probably use a lot as well. And then I've got my uh, my repair uh, my repair kit, my heal, uh, and then also my premium food consumable. Now, unlike World of Warships, World of Tanks has this thing where uh, basically you can only have one section of your sh uh, your tank covered and you still get the camo bonuses. And well, that is actually uh, only the hull. You only need the hull to be covered in order for it to be uh, get the concealment buff. So uh, that's why I only have camo on that part of my um, tank. And... Uh, oh. You know, camel can get quite expensive. So this is going to be a little bit more of a drawn-out replay. And that's kind of why I chose it, uh, partly. Uh, the other reason being that, well, it's just a great, great replay. One of my best. I think it's actually my highest basics peak game. To Dayton, will the tanks. And there we take out the Tier 6 uh, American medium tank, the M4A3E8. Uh, and one of the nice things was we didn't manage to get spotted there, which was also very, very nice. Can I move this? Okay, it's not going to. So as you can kind of see, I've got uh, a couple of modifications here. I don't know why this is uh, overlapped uh, like this. Or we're just going to have to deal with it. Put in a nice shot into the Tier 6, uh, not Soviet, but Swedish tank destroyer there, and then the other, the higher tier Swedish tank destroyer ends up uh, putting a nice shot into me and killing my loader as well. So a bit unfortunate there, but we now know where he is, and oh boy, that is an SU-100. He, his shells hurt. That could be a one-shot. I get a bounce, and he hits the ridge line behind me, and so does that Udez-03, uh, who manages to hit the uh, that little edge right there. So a bit lucky, uh, but I was conscious of both of them. And fully aware of both of them, so I did kind of plan to uh, try to avoid both shells at once. So I'm going to go down into this ridge line here and go up into the bush. Now, for those of, those of you who don't really play World of Tank or don't really play World of Tanks, you don't know, you might not be fully aware of how bushes work, but you get a certain concealment value um, when you are in a bush, and depending on how opaque or uh, transparent the bushes you do get certain uh, camouflage buffs but unfortunately I wasn't spotting that you there which I thought I might be 
but it does not look like I am. And boy, oh boy, this SE100, he's on 5 HP. I need to be very, very careful here. But I also want to be uh, very careful of not exposing myself to the rest of the team in the city, but also being careful of that Udez who could pop up at any moment. I see that this guy is kind of wiggling a little bit and having trouble uh, setting his gun. And then I managed to put a shell right into the top of his tank. So the Scorpion G just got hit from somewhere, uh, probably somewhere in the middle by that, likely the E25, because all the other heavy tanks, they should do a lot more damage than uh, what that guy received. So the E25 is somewhere in the middle, and I mean, I don't see us doing anything from here. I, I'm not probably not going to be able to spot the Udas from there, so I'm going to try and go up here, and then eventually, uh, basically I, I just want to spot the Udas uh, at this point. for my Scorpion G. Now, at this point, it's not looking too good. We are, I mean, the enemy team has three heavy tanks and two tank destroyers, so they are actually really, really set up very nicely. And we have two mediums. Uh, myself was a one shot for most of the enemy tanks on the enemy team. Uh, and then um, our P-43, I believe it is, uh, who is over there defending the base. Now this E25, he misses one, I'm gonna put one shot in, very nice. He misses a second one, I'm gonna put another shot in. And this guy is a good player, by the way. And I get a nice lucky bounce, I managed to get his track, so I'm going to start moving forward. I get another bounce from a premium round, and then I'm gonna put one right up into his tracks, and right there I was kinda of wondering why I didn't get any uh, damage as well because I'm shooting up into his tracks but then I look down in my ammo type and I realized that I actually ran out of armor piercing shells and when you fire a heat round into tracks or space armor most of the time they get absorbed not all the time but most of the time they do get absorbed by those tracks so uh, that's why I didn't get the track and damage and now that it makes sense but now I'm at a greater concern because I don't know what the HP's uh, the HP of these enemy tanks are, and you can see that there's a Defender, there's a T29, and then there's a KV-2, which all are, I mean, I don't know the HP, but uh, I'm just going to assume they're on full HP, and I'm going to be, uh, going to have some difficulty with them. Luckily, I do have heat rounds that have 250 millimeters of pen, which is quite nice for uh, this uh, tier 7. There we go, we get, uh, we, we personally don't spot the KV-2, but the Scorpion G does, and at this point, I'm kind of, I'm very conflicted on what I want to do. Uh, I can either go support uh, the enemy cap, or the Scorpion G in capping, or I can go back and help um, defend the base. And seeing that, that the P-43 was relatively low, I uh, I thought that, you know, he, he would be able to at least get one or two resets. And then I noticed that there's two enemies on cap and that they are going to out cap us. So you can kind of see there, uh, we're going to be about 50 seconds out and they're going to be about 30 seconds out. So they will win if we don't get the resets. And uh, as soon as the P-43 bis gets spotted, he's go all, all the enemies are going to be focused on him. So I'm going to need to put this perfectly placed shot right into the back of the defender at about four, uh, 480, almost 500 meters. Uh, which was a very, very nice shot, uh, something that I didn't actually really expect to, um, to land at this range. And here's the T29, our P43 BIS manages to track him, and then we get the double track. I don't know if the T29 used his damage control or his repair kit, but, uh, oh, how unfortunate there. We hit the building just to our left. I'm trying not to aim at the tracks, but, oh, disaster, three shells, three misses. This is the worst case scenario, so I'm going to try and aim more for the butt, and then we get a track and a T-29. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, how uh, sometimes you don't, uh, sometimes you can penetrate them, and sometimes you can um, damage the track and the sh uh, tank as well with those heat rounds. And then the P-43 bis with the T-29's turret looked away, uh, he can put a round right into him. Now with only six shells left and three heat rounds, and seeing that the KV-2 was on full health, it's still not looking quite uh, likely uh, that we'll win this. And you can see at the top below the, uh, I guess above my missions, uh, that the combined HP of the enemy team is uh, 328 HP more than us, which uh, means I'm a one-shot and then also P-43 is a one-shot, so we need to be very, very careful. And then here in the chat, the Scorpion G was not very happy that I ended up going to help the P-43, uh, or I was not 
I, I ended up doing helping the P43, but instead I sh he thinks that I should have helped him cap, which is a reason reasonable um, reasonable idea. But at the time I thought, okay, there's two two enemies on cap. It's gonna take me about 20, 30 seconds just to get to cap, and then by that time I don't know if the uh, P43 bis will be able to uh, hit the reset. So I'm just going to uh, get the resets myself and and help the p43 bis out then I believe I don't know if uh, he said in chat and uh, or I guess he will um, uh, the p43 bis basically just says I saved the game uh, which was a nice feeling uh, knowing that someone uh, I think it's right here if you look in chat he was, it was it's a good feeling knowing that other people and they're all good players everyone that's talking in chat uh, they're all good players, and they know what what is up. So I'm going to use this ridge line here. I know the KV2 does not have very good uh, view range, but if he uses his bushes properly, he can probably outspot me actually. And there you go, I get outspotted, and then that means I have to pull back over the ridge. And uh, I just ping on the map where I, I think he's got to be. I mean, there's only a few choices. To where that KV2 is at this point. So at this point, I I was I was thinking about telling the P43 bis to kind of work around and then work uh, near this uh, long road, uh, this little highway, I guess, um, going into the enemy camp, uh, so we get a better crossfire. And I'm just gonna stay here at the moment. But what I'm thinking is the KV2 knows that I'm over here. I'm over here, and then. Um, he doesn't know where the P43 bis is, so he's pretty much going to be focused on me. And then we get the spot there as he's moving out in the open, trying to, I guess, flank me. Um, but I'm just going to stay here spotted. And now that the P43 bis safely knows where he is, uh, he can uh, maneuver that position a little bit more. But I know that I can't stay here. Uh, I'm going to need to use ridge lines because the K while I don't have great gun, de gun depression, I think only at five degrees, uh, the KV2 certainly does not have good gun depression either. Now, if I can use my uh, ridges like this and have the KV2 come over them, uh, he can't use his gun depression, but I can use my gun elevation, and that's a lot uh, easier to do. Uh, fortunately, the P43 bis spots him here, and I'm going to put one heat round right into the side of his turret, doing 251 damage. Oh boy, this is getting intense. Can we reload a second one right into his turret before he turns it? 250 millimeter pen, we're going to get 248 um, damage, and then this is the crucial round. I could kill him. Hopefully, I don't roll low. Roll low. Low roll. Tongue twister. I bounce off him. P43 bis hits him, and I'm going to load an HE round, go right through the gun for so the kill. The post battle results here. Uh, we did manage to get a mastery badge, a top gun which is six kills, and then a high caliber as well for I guess the most damage um, caused to a certain amount of people. I don't exactly know the requirements are similar but uh, a little bit different for all the tanks. But we ended up losing a lot of credits there as you'll kind of see in a little bit. But we did manage to get uh, the win and a mastery badge as well. And it was just overall, in my opinion, one of uh, my better and more exciting games. Team score wise, 1447 base XP. Now that is quite incredible. That's the equivalent of like a 3K, uh, over 3K base XP game in World of Warships. Anything over 1000 is like 2400, I guess, equivalent. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's quite a good game, I would say. And for being that mid tier, uh, that was a good game. And I really did enjoy this replay. And I hope you did too. And we can see there 3,000, almost 3,900 uh, uh, 3, damage and six kills as well. And the Scorpion G, he ended up doing very well as well. Very well as well. Four kills, 1,000 base XP, 3,200 damage. And then the P43 Biss, who helped me out immensely. I wish there was a compliment system because I'd definitely give this guy a compliment. Um, but he did his job as well. So very nice play overall. And then the... Uh, well, <laughs> we did fire a lot of heat rounds. Uh, it was needed. Uh, all the heat rounds were needed, uh, but we can see there almost all of our cost was in ammunition resupply. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we do lose lose a bit of, a little bit of credits, but uh, at that range, honestly, the, the heat pen really did help, even though I missed three of them, or maybe RNG took three of them a little bit short, but nonetheless... I needed them and uh, I used them wisely 
At least I thought it did. But anyways, I hope you did. Uh, you guys did uh, enjoy this replay. And if you did, leave a like. Let me know what you guys think about World of Tanks and uh, what you guys think about us featuring them on the channel here. So uh, without further ado, I hope you have a wonderful day, guys. And I'll see you guys later.